Hi, my name is Dr. Ken Tindall and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Canis Automotive Labs. I'm here today to talk about how a vehicle's CAN bus is attacked and how to defend it. I'll go over the types of attack, demonstrating them in the lab, and then I'll talk about different techniques for stopping attacks. First, let me introduce myself and Canis Labs. My PhD is in real-time systems and I created timing analysis to bound the latencies of all frames across a CAN bus. This was deployed first in Volvo cars in the late 90s and today is fairly widespread. My co-founder is Antal Reinach, an automotive industry veteran and the father of Linbus. We started Canis Labs to focus on technologies to enhance CAN to meet modern challenges, particularly in security. So let's jump straight in and look at attacks on the CAN bus. Conventional attacks on CAN bus are frame attacks. These are where a CAN controller is used to send frames on the bus to disrupt the system. The most common attack is frame spoofing, where a device pretends to be a different one by sending its frames. There are different levels of sophistication in spoof attacks. The most crude level just throws out a frame, but this risks the doom loop, where the spoof and the original are sent at the same time and get stuck in a loop of errors and retransmissions. I have a demo video of the doom loop up on YouTube, so you can see how it plays out. More sophisticated spoof attacks carefully time the spoof frame to avoid the doom loop and exploit how CAN drivers in the receivers are coded. Most reported attacks on CAN bus have been frame attacks, largely because these are the easiest attacks to mount. But there's another set of attacks that aren't well publicized, but are much trickier, CAN protocol attacks. These don't use a CAN controller, they bypass it. These attack the defined behavior of the CAN protocol itself and can do all kinds of nasty things. The attacks work by malware hijacking a device and taking control of the I.O. pins that are normally driven by the on-chip CAN controller. These pins are connected to the CAN transceiver and translate digital voltages into differential voltages on the CAN bus wires. The malware can then drive these pins to emulate the CAN protocol, or at least enough of it to trick real CAN hardware into misbehaving in a certain way. As a proof of concept at Canis Labs, we produced the CANHACK Toolkit. It's an open source library written in portable embedded C that can run on pretty much any microcontroller. Even a little ARM Cortex-M0 device is fast enough. The library contains a set of functions to mount different types of attacks, and we've wrapped this library up with a CAN MicroPython API so that it can be run from a command line on a tiny Raspberry Pi Pico. Let me show you. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico board. It's a tiny little board sold for $4 and contains an RP2040 microcontroller that has two ARM Cortex-M0 CPUs. The Pico is soldered down onto this, a CANHAC carrier board. This contains a CAN transceiver wired to a couple of GPIO ports. Custom MicroPython firmware for the Pico contains our CANHAC toolkit so that attacks can be scripted in Python. There are at least half a dozen different low-level CAN protocol attacks discovered so far, and there are higher level attacks that combine them. I've put up on YouTube a demonstration video that shows six different CAN protocol attacks in detail, but I'll demonstrate one here. It's called the Janus attack. It's a new CAN protocol attack that I conceived recently, and it works by exploiting differences in sample points between different CAN controllers. Let's have a look at some CAN bits. There is usually a bus-wide specification for where the sample point should be. In this example, it's set to 75%. But in practice, inexperienced developers often just set the sample point to 50%. And it's quite common for protocol decoders and logic analyzers to do that too. This generally won't show up as a problem in testing, especially if the CAN bus is short, but this is an opportunity for an attack. By changing the signal level within a bit between two different sample points, it's possible to encode different bit values at different receiving CAN controllers. This can be exploited to create a Janus frame so that it looks like a valid CAN frame at either receiver, but the frames have different payloads. There are some restrictions on forming Janus frames. For example, they have to have the same number of bits, including stuff bits, so they start and finish together. But it's fairly straightforward to find valid Janus frames, and to prove the concept, we created a simple tool to do that. It's released as open source in our CANHack GitHub repository. But to see the attack for real, let's head over to the lab. Here is the benchtop uh, demonstration kit. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. This is a logic analyzer connected via USB to the Raspberry Pi. This is a CAN hack board and a Raspberry Pi Pico uh, connected to 
the uh, Canis Labs Can Pico board. And here's another Can Pico board. And the Canis Labs Can Hack board is, uh, has uh, RX and TX pins from the transceiver connected through to the logic analyzer. So the Janus attack is going to attack two different uh, receivers. Uh, now we need to set up the CAN controllers slightly differently between them. So uh, the first one will have uh, a sample point of 75% and the second one will set to 500 kilobits and 50%, which is a common default setting that uh, lots of software and, and logic analyzers use. Uh, and then we will use the CAN Pico library monitor program to display what each of these devices sees. Then we will use CAN hack and we will set uh, two frames. The first frame has the CAN ID of 123 and we will have a short payload of 10 hex. And then we'll set a second frame that is going to appear inside the same Janus frame with a slightly different payload. And we mark this as second frame. And we can actually see those, what those frames look like. So we see here the frames have the same uh, number of bits. Now to mount the attack, we need to use the logic analyzer to see what's happened. Um, and we basically send the Janus frame. So if we arm the logic analyzer, send the Janus frame, here we go. So, uh, this receiver has received a, a hex one zero payload and this receiver has received F4. So one frame was sent and here it's marked as received okay. Uh, and the logic analyzer here sees, uh, uh, the decoder sees uh, F4 as the payload, which is this 75%, which is what we set the sample point to. But the other device, uh, because it's uh, got a different sample point, sees a different payload. And we can see the bitstream here uh, is not a regular CAN bitstream uh, for this frame. So if we zoom in a little closer, we can see these uh, strange bit formations here, which are not regular CAN bits. And that's the, uh, the CANIS bit. So this will read zero in one and one in a second half, zero and one, zero and one. And they'll both receive a one here. All of them see zeros here and so on. So we've managed to encode two different payloads inside the one frame by manipulating the CAN uh, bit sync protocol and by sending a carefully crafted uh, sequence of ones and zeros uh, to the CAN TX pin so that we can get two different receivers to see two different payloads. And that's basically the Janus attack. The attacks we've seen are pretty straightforward to carry out. The CAN protocol attacks in particular just need malware injected into a hijacked CPU, something that's commonly achieved with a buffer overrun attack. And once malware is injected, it's easy to take over the GPIO pins and mount count protocol attacks. So what techniques are there for mitigating these attacks? There are basically four, intrusion detection systems, encryption, security gateways, and new CAN hardware. None of these techniques on their own prevent all attacks. Protecting a CAN bus requires defense in depth, and that means multiple overlapping techniques. Let's take a very quick look at intrusion detection. Intrusion detection systems, or IDS, are the CCTV of CAN bus. They don't actually stop an attack, just observe it happening, and then tell someone about it. Just like CCTV, they will fail to spot every incident, and just like CCTV that triggers when a tree moves in the wind, they'll produce false positives. After something's discovered, the data capture will be reviewed to find out how that happened. A CCTV system based on analog cameras and VHS tape is pretty useless. 
whereas a UHD 4K video stored on a DVR is a lot more useful. And the same goes for CAN intrusion detection systems. One built using a regular CAN controller isn't going to detect CAN protocol attacks, which are largely invisible, like the Janus attack proves. So a proper CAN IDS needs to have specially designed CAN hardware to spot low-level CAN protocol events. At Canis Labs, we developed our own CAN silicon IP that can spot protocol attacks. Thank you for watching. You can find out more about these topics from my blog site, kentindle.github.io, and you can contact me by email at ken.tindle at canislabs.com.